So Victor, we've just filmed the Monan 110 outside the Monan shipyard. Are we the first people who filmed it? Yes, David, you got the world premiere. What an honor, what an honor. I thought this conversation that we have, we could divide a little bit in two parts. First of all, um, about Monan the company. And then let's talk about this this yacht. Um, Monan's had different ownership over a, a long course of years. Uh, what's the situation today? Okay, so three and a half years ago, the Australian couple Matthew and Louise Baxter stepped into the company, took over the company, and actually created a very good vision and executed it. So they decided to go for what I call premium semi-custom building and to build on speculation. So we got continuity in the company but very much have the ability to customize the yacht to the client wishes. And that's what we're doing now. And I think quite successfully, uh, at this moment we have, with this boat including, five boats under construction. With regard to this yacht, I think it's important, if people are watching this video and they're still learning about yachting, and, and there's new people coming into the industry all the time, and it's not that unusual for a first time buyer to buy a 110 foot yacht. So they go to a boat show, they see hundreds of yachts in the 100, 110, 120 foot. How will they know how this is any different to any other of those boats? Okay, well interestingly enough, they've, we don't go to boat shows to exhibit. You don't exhibit in boat shows? No, we'd like to have the clients all the time they'd like, either to come on board one of our yachts somewhere in the world, or come to the shipyard and listen to them and talk about what they like to have instead of being a boat show with lots of people around making appointments, being moved on. So we think that's a way of exclusive yacht building and servicing our customers. Oh, interesting. So in that case, let's say that they are in a big marina, let's yes. say Antibes. Yes. And they've seen all the way down the Côte d'Azur yachts of this kind of size range. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell me about the Monan 110 that differentiates itself from any other yacht in the, in the size range? Well, I think when you, when you walk, walk the dock, um, you'll see that she actually has an elegant and timeless design, typical Monan, as you can recognize them from maybe a mile away, as we've done over 80 yachts in the past. And this is actually a continuation of the famous Monan 84 and 97. And you can see René van der Velde did very similar lines, a little bit fresher and more modern, but you will recognize her. But also, the moment you would step on board, you feel it's a steel hull, it feels solid. It, it, it's a different world than, with all respect, a composite yacht. Um, so that will be your first acquaintance when you put foot right on the passerelle. Okay, let me stop you there then. So if you see that as a benefit, that it's a steel hull, not a fiberglass hull, why are so many builders in this size range building with fiberglass? Well, it's a philosophy, of course, but composite is a great material when you want to do high volume production and there's a cost factor involved. And maybe also a weight factor when you want to go at high speeds, so semi-displacement boats, that is the, could be a material of choice. Or if you want to go higher spec and um, fast boats, you'll choose aluminium, but definitely metal is the better and also more expensive material to build a boat from. Right, so fiberglass is better for production, mm -hmm. multiple, multiple yachts all looking exactly the same, and it's better for speed as well. What, what are the benefits of steel? Well, steel, this is a full displacement yacht, as we call it. It gives you safety. I guess that's in a very important part and also peace of mind. When you hit something in the water, it could be a, a big tree trunk or a container, um, the steel will not break, it will cripple and bend, and of course you have watertight bulkheads, but um, it's a safer platform. Big ships like cruise ships and tankers, there's a reason why they're built from steel. So actually if you think of it, it's a more, if you think about footprint, um, environment, steel can be recycled at the end of life. Maybe it's in 100 years of time when the boat is finished, but that's also a philosophy I think which is important. Now you mentioned earlier about comfort. Yes. Is the limit of um, how Monan build comfortable yachts just the fact that they're built out of steel? Is it as simple as that? Well, think about your senses, David, when you step on board. What I think is important is volume. The boat is airy, high ceiling heights. We have 
2 meter 15 here in the, in, in the main deck. Um, light, so there's a lot of light, it's not cramped, but also sound, yeah. which I think is, is one of the major things where we differentiate from faster boats and, and with all respect composite boats, it's very quiet. Yeah. And you could even sleep while you're on the way at night with engines running or even in a, in a, in a, in a bay with a generator running. Uh, we just did a test. We don't see a difference between generator on, generator off in the master cabin. No difference at all in noise, nothing. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you can actually also travel at night to cover distance. It's also an interesting philosophy. Yeah. So that's noise and vibration, which is extremely good or low, I should say. But also the air quality on board. We actually have what we call fresh air makeup, what you hardly find on this size of boats. So we actually taking in a 100 cubic meters of air every hour in through the complete yacht to feel fresh and actually also saves the interior of the yacht. Um, but I think the human element is very important that you have fresh air. When we were talking about this earlier as well, we both agreed that for somebody who's new to the industry, you might think, well, why would I want to have a top speed of 13 knots mm -hmm. when I can have a top speed of 25, of 26 knots? But the reality of traveling at 25 knots on a 100 foot yacht is quite different to what you might think, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's actually not that comfortable to, to travel at that sort of speed. Well, that's what I keep on hearing from people who do it. It's maybe fun for a little while, uh, but then if you, you, you it's, it's loud, it's bumpy, it's like driving a sports car. If you actually are on board this boat, you're on the back seat of a very comfortable limousine. Maybe that's, that's a difference. It saves you loads of fuel. I think that's also becoming a more important point uh, nowadays. And think of the concept we talked about before. Travel at night if you want to relocate, like a cruise ship does. You wake up, you open the curtains, next day you're in a different bay. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a philosophy that if you actually execute it, you appreciate it also. So we've got the steel hull. Mm -hmm. a massive amount of soundproofing and anti-vibration, um, the introduction of fresh air, mm -hmm. plenty of light, although some there's other yachts with a lot of light in as well, Absolutely. but not a lot of yachts that have got the fresh air introduction system on this size range. That's truly impressive. And as I arrived at the shipyard yesterday, before we even set foot on the boat, as we were walking along the side, you start, started pointing out the deck hardware to me. Ah, and yes, you were yes. clearly very proud about that. Yeah, we, <laughs> we like to uh, heavy duty gear, reliable gear, and not under spec it. So we don't want to save costs on that. We want that this is a, a boat to have worldwide operational capability. And that's not always nice weather, as you know. And for me, I'm a keen sailor myself. And then when I'm out with my family at night and the wind picks up, the waves pick up, you want to make sure that your anchor equipment is very good. And actually, if needed and you need to go, that you can pick up the anchor. So um, actually, we took care of that by actually very decently sized anchor winches. They pull uh, 2.7 tons. We have 135 meters of chain. There's a 225 kilo anchor, and we have two of them. So you'll be very secure. Let's go through that again, because I'm curious, um, it's surprising who watches these videos. Yeah. And there may well be the owner of a 100 foot, 110 foot yacht watching it. It's entirely possible. Um, if they want to compare their anchor gear on their yacht with yours, mm -hmm. tell me again the, the size of the anchors, the power of the winches. Okay. So we've installed now uh, anchors of 225 kilos each. They have 135 meters of chain, which can even be lengthened. And then the winch has a pulling power of 2.7 tons, which is substantial. And my experience has been that even though a first time buyer may not appreciate how, that import how important that is, captains certainly appreciate the importance of it. It's your lifeline. Yeah. You also made a comment to me. You said um, any engine room looks good when it's brand new. And then you said, well, come back after five years and then you know how well it's designed, built and maintained. And it's crucial. And it's the modern philosophy that we give as much as possible access to the, all the components so that the engineer can actually maintain it. And I think a good example, um, last week we had 
information from Lodge Register who went for a five-year survey on the first Martinique, Brigadoon, and the surveyor said, this is the best yacht I've ever seen in a five-year survey. So that was a great compliment for everybody who built the yacht, but also, of course, the crew who maintained her. Yeah. And the layout of the engine room that allowed them to maintain the yacht. And it's not only the engine room, it's covered all technical spaces. So that was nice. Now, another thing that's come up a lot in conversation in the last couple of days is the fact that this is a Dutch shipyard. Mm -hmm. Why is that so significant? Uh, well, the Dutch have a long nautical heritage, and I think in the past millennium we've built up a reputation for building very, very, very good yachts at the top end of the market. And that's exactly where Monen is, and we want to be uh, in our size range. And we got that pedigree. And we do everything we do every day, that's what is on top of our mind. So, you know, when somebody buys a yacht for the first time or any time actually, there's going to be at some point in the future they're probably going to have to sell it. Do you think that makes a difference? Well, you've, you're a broker uh, yourself, David, and I think that actually the pedigree of a brand, also design in a range like we have with this yacht, uh, the quality, of course, the maintenance comes into it while it's aging. But the day you want to sell it, resale value does play an important yeah. part. And we have proven that that's very high with the boats that uh, yeah. Monum builds. Yeah, and, and I think as a broker, um, certain brands, when they come on the market, you do really want to get the central agency on them because you know they're sellable yachts. And Monum is without a doubt one of those brands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if a, if a Mona and Mark Tanique came up on the brokerage market, I think there'd be, be a keen. there'd be a shark fight with the, all the brokers wanting to to represent it because they know it's sellable, it's a reputable brand, mm -hmm. uh, well built, well put together. So, it, as to my knowledge, there's not a brokerage one on the market at the moment, but this yacht is for sale, and the fact that it's for sale outside the shipyard, located where it's located, what kind of opportunities did that give a, a buyer? So. What makes her special? She has zero miles on the clock, besides, of course, the sea trial program we went through. But she's brand new. Yeah. And if a buyer steps on board, here at the shipyard, we could make modifications if required. Or even maybe better, take it out for a few weeks, spend your summer holiday the next coming month, make your wish list, yeah. and bring it back so that we can actually make it really a customized moment for you. Yeah. And by the way, they don't have to take it to the Balearic Islands because not too far from here, you've got some amazing cruising ground. Yes, it's getting more popular. The Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, beautiful areas in the month of, you know, the summer month, European summer month. And it's a mild climate. Yeah. Um, beautiful while you're here. Why not? You'll be there in two, three days. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I hope that somebody watches this video and they do exactly that. Thanks very much, Victor. I appreciate it. Thank you, David.